Yeah. <laughs> but she said she was ready. At least you got some practice. Well, I'll, 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 I'll the warm up has been and done. I'll, I'll modify it. Call the meeting to order. This is the Rice Creek Watershed Board of Managers regular meeting. It's Wednesday, August 14th. It's 9 a.m. We are in our usual meeting place with Shoreview City Hall Council Chambers. I note that all of the managers are present. Uh, Nick, any changes to the agenda? Staff have no uh, suggested changes. I have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Mr. Manager, I would make a motion that we approve the board minutes of the regular meeting of July 24, uh, 24 2024, uh, noting that I was not present on that day, but I did review the minutes. Everything looks in order, so I would make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Any discussion? I have one. On page 8, uh, there's a typo on line 112. Uh, we have and not attached to a habituated, it should be habitable structure. <laughs> <laughs> so with that typo oh, correction, yeah. <laughs> I have no other changes. Uh, all in favor, say aye. With that change? Aye. 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 With, with amended. That correction, yeah. Okay. Aye. I'm pretty sure we don't want habituated to go no, forward. All right. No, I, I just want to <laughs> Thank you. have it clear. That's Thank all, you. Sir. Appreciate that. Um, Nick, we're at the consent agenda. Correct. Patrick, what do you got for us? Yes, uh, President Bradley, Board of Managers, staff have one application for your consideration today up in Forest Lake. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Patrick? Nope. Uh, can we have a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the consent agenda as outlined in the above table of contents in accordance with Rice Creek Watershed District Engineer's findings and recommendations for permit number 24-045, dated August 6, 2024. Second. That is to Cap Rock. Any, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Water quality grant applications are next. Okay, fabulous. Molly, welcome. I think you have to hold it for a moment for it to respond. Okay, I can bend down. Seems like this is okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Good morning, Mr. President, Board of Managers. For your consideration today on the consent agenda, we have five water quality grant applications for your approval. Um, there are three applications in Ramsey County, R24-08. That is the on slash visser <clears throat> concurrent shoreline stabilization and restoration project. This project is a dual shoreline uh, between two landowners that just connects. It's just one large shoreline. Uh, so they're looking to restore and stabilize that shoreline on Bald Eagle Lake. Um, R24-09 is the Timber Hills Beach Association Rain Garden Restoration Project. There are two rain gardens that need retrofitting uh, with native plants and other erosion control methods. Uh, these rain gardens were installed uh, well over a decade ago, uh, so they're needing a retrofit. Um, and then the final Ramsey County application is R24-10, the Silverthorne Estates Wetland Edge Restoration. Uh, so similar to a shoreline restoration, this is along a wetland that has open water within the wetland and it connects into Rice Creek. Um, and so there's a very large lack of vegetation on this shore, uh, wetland edge, so mm -hmm. they're looking to restore and stabilize that. In Washington County, we have two applications. The W24-01 Johnson Prairie Restoration up in Forest Lake. Uh, this is, it used to be farmland, residential farmland. They're looking to restore a little over two acres to, um, to prairie. And they're going to do a prescribed burn as well to restore some of the native vegetation that is existing. And then the final application is 
W24-02, the Forest Lake Area High School Infiltration Basin Restoration and Prairie Conversion Project. Uh, this is a partnership with the Minnesota Water Stewards Program with Kendra Sommerfeld with the Communications and Outreach Program. Um, so the school reached out to both Rice Creek and Comfort Lake Forest Lake a little over a year ago to consider a potential project on their property that would be a really good example for the community and for the students. Um, the primary contact for this project is the environmental studies teacher and he's very passionate about this project so we wanted to see if we could get something going for them. Uh, the Washington Conservation District drafted up a very large kind of project scope. There's many different projects that they could do on the property uh, but this project that's being presented today is directly in front of the school. It's a very large infiltration basin that they're looking to replace all of the turf and turn it into a prairie area and then also have a demonstration native planting section for students and then also for water quality in, in the far north corner. Um, so we're looking to partner with a water steward on this project for installation and then use it as education. Uh, if there's any questions about these many applications, uh, feel free to ask them now. I, I have an observation and a question. First of all, uh, I'd like to point out that Travis Visser is a is a conductor for Northern Pacific, uh, oh. one, of the, one, of the, one of the railroads. So right. John, you thought you might find that interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that piece of property used to be owned by Travis's father and mother and they sold the house and left him with the garage, which he's now turned into a house. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. But the question I have is on the Forest Lake, uh, sometimes when we have a significant project that does multiple things, we give more than 25%. Do we have a budget to do a 50% on this one? Yep, so this one is a 75%. That'll be 7,500 through the water quality grant. Mm -hmm. um, I do have reserved funds within the water quality grant budget for water steward collaboration work. That total is amounted to 15,000. Um, so some of that money will go towards all of the technical services that went towards designing and coordinating this project. And then if there's any extra costs that need to be you know, related to the project, we can consider that. Um, there's also additional funds since this will be considered a capstone project for the water steward program. Kendra has, <clears throat> excuse me, Kendra has some budget um, within the communications and outreach program. So if I can parse through that, what you're telling me is we are giving them more money than we've identified in this grant. Yes, there will be $6,000 for the capstone project component. Um, I only included the 7,500 since that's, we're just reviewing right. the grant. And, uh, Marcy? Um, and I think in the budget information we saw at our workshop, there was a line for Forest Lake High School. Yes? Okay. Yes, for 2025. Yep. For 2025. Yes. Um, I, I also I have a question about <clears throat> the um, Johnson cost share application, which I'm not, where are my glasses? Um, it references the RCWD Rural Groundwater and Surface Water SWA. Uh, what is, what is that and are it's we looking at groundwater too? How? That's a sub-watershed assessment that was conducted by the Washington Conservation District that Lori Tella was working under um, when looking at potential projects on the property to design the scope of work. Oh, SWA means sub-watershed <laughs> assessment. Okay. Good. Steve, Good to know. Could, uh, could I ask you a question? Is there fees on these other ones that we're not seeing? Um, I was not aware that there was other expenditures above and beyond what we're seeing here. I'm just, quite, I'm just yeah. curious. Uh, Manager Wagaman, can you clarify what application you're well, you, to? Well, I'm, t I'm talking generally. <coughs> you were saying that there was stuff not, there's cost not added into the one for Forest Lake. I'm just saying, is that a general rule on all of these? No, that is specific to this project okay. since okay. it is a collaboration with a water steward. All right. Thank you. Yes. yes. 
So, so Mr. President, uh, may I comment? Mm -hmm. I have some comment here. I was the uh, advisory committee mm, board you. member that evening. So, uh, first of all, uh, very nice to see you, Mayor Molly, and uh, and uh, Nick was there at the meeting also. So, there were a couple things came in, uh, and I'll just comment about here. Um, one uh, on the Prairie Restoration in Forest Lake, one of the members of the advisory committee uh, commented about the the uh, installation of fiber optic cable. And so uh, that rang a bell with me because I saw that in Hugo also, and and I don't remember seeing a permit from them. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because when they put uh, fiber optic cable be through the drainage ditch before on 61, it turned out to be way too high. And also when they put it down 190th Street with their hole, they broke all the tiles that went for ditch five and <clears throat> seven. Yeah, you know, uh, so that was another problem. So it was nice of the, uh, the member from Forest Lake to mention that. Um, there was some uh, uh, discussion about uh, how the project at the high school was scored. And uh, not that they're complaining about it, they felt that, this, that the scoring card wasn't complete enough because this is at the main entrance of the high school into Forest Lake, a very public place where all the students go and the buses unload and people see it. And they felt that, that was should be given the credit. And they mo noted that on the scorecard, this one had a high score of like 30, although, and they wondered why that was so high compared to the amount of phosphorus that being removed was comparable to what the others that were at 17 or 20. And so it, the suggestion was that, that maybe it, it, that, that public uh, uh, viewing has a, a great value and should be, and future uh, scorecards should be noted and such. And then finally, um, uh, as Molly said, this is a project that's a part of many projects. And so that made me think about, uh, we did a project with uh, Forest Lake High School uh, many years ago. Now uh, it uh, was uh, a $500,000 uh, $500, grant, which we were a partner with. The, the actual grant went to the high school itself, mm -hmm. was for Clearwater Creek. And so if we're going to have a lot of projects here that are going to be bundled together, I would suggest, as you were talking about, Mr. President, that in the future we might try to see if, if what this looks like and if there's grant money available uh, for this bundle of projects, since this is what a plan is. But for, for right now, it's just this point, this part. And so, and then finally, there was a question of where was that um, uh, water after it's treated in Forest Lake going to go? I'm assuming it was going to go north under uh, 97 and then out and around and uh, by the city hall. By I, say, I, I'm, I assume that, but there was a question by one of the members about that. Other than that, all the members, all of these uh, passed uh, unanimously, and uh, except on the uh, high school one, one member abstained from voting for some reason. I, he didn't say why, but it was eight, eight, uh, uh, no negative votes is what I'm telling you. Very Thank active you. citizens advisory committee. Mr. President, can I, just a clarifying question, Molly. I think maybe this is what you were trying to ask. Specifically on the Forest Lake High School project, the total cost being 27,585, what is the total amount of contribution that the watershed's making to that total cost outside of the grant dollars? Maybe is that well, kind I of would, the question you were asking? I was wondering if it was that on all of them too, um, that I, something I was not aware of. Sure. Yeah, my ask, I guess, would be specifically on this. So of the $27,000 cost, what is the watershed's total contribution in addition to the grant? That's a great question, Manager Robertson. So in addition to the $7,500 grant, the watershed district will be contributing $6,000 through the Minnesota Water Stewards Capstone Fund, mm -hmm. uh, which will be found in the communications and outreach budget. And that would go being covering costs that are included in the 27585 okay. Yes. And so the 27585 amount is the maximum amount of the project. Uh, there are certain components that Washington Conservation District outlined that if the school can't afford the entire project, um, the demonstration garden can be decreased to a smaller size, other things like that. Um, but the overall contribution from Rice Creek Watershed District will be 
13,500 okay. from the two budgets. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And, and it just again, and that 13.5 goes to cover the 27.585. Correct. Okay. Any further questions? I think we've already had a motion, have we not? No, have we, we haven't. We could have a motion then. John? Uh, I'll move, uh, Mr. President, that we approve the consent agenda or um, for the uh, Rice Creek Watershed District Outreach and Grants recommendations dated August 7th, 2024. <clears throat> And that would be uh, numbers R2408, R2409, R2410, R2401, uh, and W2402. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Nick? Manager Bradley, Board of Managers, just to note that the water quality grant uh, its guidelines typically come back in the fall of the year and we have uh, a discussion regarding its its frame. So uh, we'll be looking to do that later in the year and some of the matters that uh, Manager Waller brought up and, and things that uh, Molly may see for improvement we can discuss at that time. Okay. All right. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Managers, next on the agenda is the public hearing on your proposed uh, 2025 budget. Uh, Manager Bradley has a, a short introduction to that. So we'd like to call to order the public hearing on the Rice Creek Watershed District proposed 2025 budget and levy, including the watershed-wide property tax levy and special levy for Ramsey County Ditch 4 Water Management District known as a WMD. The purpose of the hearing is to hear comments and take input from parties having an interest in the proposed 2025 budget and levy. The levy will include a property tax levy on all properties located within the watershed district. It will also include additional special levy on a water management district for the Ramsey County Ditch 4 WMD. Members of the public participating remotely are asked to remain muted until they call for public comment. I will solicit comments from remote participants individually. When I call your name, please unmute your microphone, speak clearly and state your name and address for the record and then make your comments. Mr. Tomczak, would you please provide a summary of the 2025 budget and levy impact as well as the individual water management district budget and levy? Yes, uh, President Bradley, Board of Managers, I'm happy to do that. I'll make note that uh, proper notice of today's public hearing was provided. Uh, you'll find that on page 102 of the packet, which includes dates, dates and locations of publication. On page 103 of the packet, you'll see the table of the district's 2025 proposed budget, the various funds and the associated amounts. I'm gonna ask uh, our support here to show it. Maybe we'll need to zoom in a little bit. As I've said in the past, it's all numbers. They're very important, uh, so no pretty pictures at this time. <coughs> I know that uh, members of the board, the managers, do have that uh, in their hands. If you are able to zoom in, that would be great. Otherwise, I'll just proceed and we'll take uh, can move forward with the public hearing. So the proposed 2025 budget supports the implementation of the Rice Creek Watershed District 10-year watershed management plan. Uh, it provides the resource management goals and direction of the district, establishing a budget framework. That said, it is uh, a guidance there. It is not the definitive of the district's annual budget, but rather a foundation to the activities that we'll be undertaking. I'll note that within the uh, spreadsheet that's shown on the screen and in your packet is uh, a column titled component of funds. This uh, column identifies the relationship of that fund item or its sub fund to the district's fund balance. Thank you. The 2025 budget includes dollars for the district's general administration and operations. Uh, for the district managers as well as district staff. Uh, these include the shared budget efforts of the district programs, 
such as rent for the building, uh, the garage that we have, the fleet of vehicles that you uh, own and maintain, potential purchase of vehicle, uh, notably a field utility vehicle, uh, and certainly all current uh, managers uh, per diems and expenses, as well as staff positions, salary, the benefits the district offers, uh, all consistent with the district's organizational chart. Moving from there into the district's individual programs and projects, uh, highlighting those for intended work for 2025. So on the page, I'm starting with Fund 30 then, uh, which is communications and outreach. Here we have a refocus to from the water stewards portion of the program to capitalize on visual media. Uh, you may recognize this as the efforts uh, that Kendra's undertaken at Moore Lake for art installation and signage in different of uh, locations of the district projects uh, to interface well with the public. This is uh, to implement a district commitment of $15,000 for a water stewards capstone project at Forest Lake High School as Manager Wine had mentioned on the last item. Outreach prop, uh, partnerships budget uh, is raised to address increased support requests and increased cost. These are the city and county programs and outreach initiatives such as workshops or events that are typically uh, entertained during our good summer months, et cetera, uh, in business outreach programs. This includes an increase to the mini grant program uh, twofold to $20,000. You had that discussion at your board workshop. And any update to the watershed management plan as necessary, along with engineering support. This would include things like the delisting of f facilities and removal from the uh, watershed management plan. This also includes communication and partnership on the district's projects and its policy positions. You had a great effort on that in regards to Ramsey County Ditch 2, 3, uh, and 5 in your outreach for state funding. Moving on to Fund 35, which is information management. When you look to conclude the current district boundary management effort, maintain the district-wide model, and update uh, data accordingly as, as the landscape changes, assist cities in application for the district-wide model and flood study. I made mention of that yesterday, in, or excuse me, at the workshop on Monday in regards to Centerville and the success there in getting the uh, FEMA map adjusted. Uh, complete modeling software conversions. Here, the software that's utilized uh, is frequently upgraded, if you will, or changes through time with, with better software, and so we want to keep that model fresh. Uh, we look to maintain the district's databases and further develop institutional knowledge tools, if you will. This is things like our drainage database, uh, MS Forefront, where we house all our projects that allow us to report on the district work and the GIS layers that help us to understand the landscape and engage uh, as an informed entity in uh, pre-project discussions. We also maintain the district website. This is an annual hosting cost. We have uh, periodic updates and some maintenance costs there as, as well. We do need a new computer server that's estimated at roughly $20,000. That's included in your budget for 2025. Moving on to Fund 60, which is restoration projects. Here we'll look to develop plans for restoration and stabilization of Clearwater Creek, Anoka, Washington Judicial Ditch 3. You, just, you saw the uh, report on that at the workshop on Monday. We look to study potential water quality improvement projects at Nook County Ditch 72, which is a tile line. Implement uh, the $100,000 match that you committed to the city of Fridley uh, for its Moore Lake project in the biochar uh, system. Implement uh, the next middle and lower Rice Creek stream bank stabilization projects based on the past study. 
study the retrofit of Highway 61 ponds for Bald Eagle Lake water quality management. That also came up at the workshop in regards to releasing the request for proposal there. Develop final plans uh, with regulations and permits for Ramsey County Ditch 2, 3, and 5 at Jones Lake. Uh, continue with the stormwater mm -hmm. management cost share program. This includes uh, the district's past committed grant awards. So as entities get those projects uh, on the ground, we'll look to pay those out, even though you've awarded them in past years. Results in a, uh, I'll say an elevated number in the current one. Uh, these <coughs> funds uh, for the past approvals, the committed dollars are coming from your uh, uh, fund balance. Mm -hmm. All right, um, collaborate in the Clear Lake Water Management Project for shoreline restoration at Eureka Avenue and Forest Lake. Look to continue the groundwater management and stormwater reuse assessment program. <clears throat> Looking for opportunities to use stormwater reuse on the landscape and capitalize uh, with our communities on stormwater planning opportunities. From there, we'll move into regulatory fund 70. Here the district will be looking to implement its revised regulations. We will update sure to use protocols and provide any necessary guidance documents and assistance to our partners and the public. Uh, study and implement support to the best management practices that uh, permittees are required to put on the landscape. Certainly implement the annual district reporting the pre-permit engagement that we undertake and management of those open permits that are issued. We look to continue partnerships under the inspection contract with our county uh, conservation district and others as needed. Moving on to fund 80, ditch and creek maintenance. Here we look to maintain uh, the public drainage system right of way by regular inspection. This includes mowing and maintenance activity that we find on the landscape. Implement further maintenance work on Nook County Ditch 10 2232, along with other system maintenance needs. Complete repair reports and studies, the Nook County uh, Ramsey Judicial Ditch 1, Branch 1, 2, and 3. Implement uh, Ramsey County Ditch 4 man Water Management District and conclude project work initiated in 2024. Implement a uh, study phase of Anoak County Ditch 5362 Branch 5 and 6. Support efficient public drainage uh, system maintenance by our municipal partners when they have work in, along the public uh, drainage system. Participate as appropriate in natural waterway management. Continue the public drainage system maintenance on Washington Judicial Ditch 5 and Judicial Ditch 7. We have a tile line that needs to be uh, improved there. Right. Moving on to lake and stream management, Fund 90. Is there a question? Uh, you, I think you meant repair. Not improved. Very good. Indeed. <laughs> Catch. Thank you. Fund 90, Lake and Stream Management. Continue water quality grant uh, with increase to address uh, inflation in the significant existing committed uh, project payout. Continue surface water monitoring management program and continue our common carp management and curly leaf pond weed management programs. And then lastly, uh, Fund 95, our district facilities. We will continue the inspection, repair, and maintenance of the district facilities, such as our iron enhanced sand filter uh, that Tom and Abel have been speaking with you about and uh, support there for our, notably the PLOP, Preby Lake Outfall project and our partners there. The total of the 2025 proposed expenditures are $9,332,614. That budget uh, consists of nearly $900,000 in committed spending, 
meaning uh, you had generally levied for it previously, and so those dollars are coming out of fund balance. Uh, in total, we have roughly 2.5 million uh, in fund balance spending. That's evidence of the district's success in securing grants mm -hmm. and your uh, approach to save in advance for projects and programs. And uh, along with the uh, changes on the urban fringe regarding taxable market value. The board uh, each year considers the levy implications on its property owners. Uh, levy requirements uh, are indicated to be flat or declining. Uh, the budget's levy impact on property owners is challenging, as we've discussed in the past at best, as it is being allocated across four different counties uh, with their various rates. There may be some increases or decreases for individual property owners, uh, and the estimated tax rate within counties varies from year to year. Impact will likely be moderate to declining for from the 2024 property tax uh, impact. New developments added uh, taxable market value and increasing market value uh, if it exists against the 2025 budget, which is a change in 0.67% uh, over the previous years. The estimated tax impact on $200,000 of property value is estimated at around $32 uh, per year, down from uh, estimates in previous years. Specific to the Water Management District, 2025 includes um, Ramsey County Ditch 4 Water Management District, this charge will result in a total collection of $94,538. That's comprised of $85,038 in levied charges and another $9,500 in right-of-way direct billing to the road authority. I'm happy to take any questions. I'll make note that uh, district staff does have a couple of comments that I'll uh, return to my seat and share. All right. Any questions from the board of Nick about our budget? We've, of course, gone through this several times, and if there are new questions, John? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I, my, probably an annual question from me, but um, it has to do with the Rice Creek Watershed District levy of $200,000 on property. I, I think that's finding a $200,000 property in Rice Creek is rather difficult these days, <clears throat> and, and this is a figure that's been used for many, many years, and maybe we should update it because probably the more average cost is not $31, but more like $60. And uh, at least that's my experience, and I own one of those pieces of property that happens to be, quote, average, a small house and such. So, um, uh, and we've had this discussion before, but uh, I'll leave that comment at this. I, I would merely note that uh, I've, I've been following in the paper other people's budgets, and they all seem to do about the same thing. But yeah, your point yeah, is well yeah. noted. Yeah, it's. It, I, I think Pretty it's. Common. I think it needs to be a little bit more uh, uh, clear. Uh, you know, yeah. I, that's mm. kind of misleading in my point of view. Not intentionally. I understand. You understand. Yep. But but uh, the last few years, uh, for example, on my own property, I had a sixty thousand dollar increase in one year. So you see, uh, I think that that we, we should reevaluate that. I would suggest that in advance of next year's budget, we yeah. formally look at this question. Like, you know, yeah. I, we're not trying to hide anything. We're just trying to, yeah. we happen to have these numbers for the last, you know, 10 years. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm not asking to change it immediately either. I just think that for when we get to, we should, that's something to update on our yeah. disclosure. Yes, uh, President Bradley, Board of Managers, uh, point well taken. Uh, as, as noted in the conversation, it's simply follow through of what the number we've used in the past, $200,000 of property value. Uh, so yeah, a simple doubling. Uh, you could say $400,000 piece of property is gonna run about $60, $64 a year in, in tax from Rice Creek. Um, Correct. Of course, we're we're one of many on those uh, uh, assessments, other entities that are taxing as well and such, but that's our, our best. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would think since this is the preliminary budget, maybe we just put some kind of amended total when we approve the final budget later in the year. Because to your point, I think that is fair. I think the city we're using $350,000 as the average. Because I was sitting when you said that, I was like, where do I get a $200,000 piece of property? I would like to know where those are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, awesome. right, right. So I just think given, you know, just the housing market and property values, those assessments increasing and I get every county's different and all those things but I think it would be fair I would rather put out a number that you know is is higher than reality than assume that we're dealing with two hundred thousand dollar parcels so I would think by the final budget it would be easy enough to just include that I get this is the way we've always done it but unfortunately yeah. the market has changed and so I might suggest is we do both we say historically we've used two hundred thousand mm -hmm. it would be this but uh, Based on a you know reasonable estimate, we think a, a upgrade to uh, pick a number. A typical right. average. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah no Whatever problem. the number is, just I think to yeah. be fair. Thank if you, you get if that's feasible between now and then. Yes, uh, board of managers. The board is uh, adopts its uh, final budget in September. Uh, at that time, I could bring that number forward. Um, I'm, I'm hearing 400,000 might be a reasonable number. It's, no it's tough for me to divine what the <clears throat> average property is. Sure. I presume we're thinking residential, but then you have tons of industrial you, you properties. You have commercial as well. Yeah. So how, could I I ask, how sure. did you guys arrive at 350? It's did the average so? median home value in the city overall. So that's the okay. number that we choose. And that number changes annually. But again, yeah. city government yeah. is a lot different than watershed. No. So I, but mean, I mean, that was your <laughs> average. Go ahead. So, Mr. Chair, am I correct to assume this is 200000 of property value? So if you happen to be a $600,000 home, you can times it by three or yes. no, a million linear. dollar. Pardon? I don't think it's linear. Is it linear? I, I would believe it to be. Yeah, yeah I okay. think it is. Because okay. it says property yeah. value. <laughs> it's not saying if, if nothing value else, of a home. If nothing else, we could say uh, we recognize that the... City of Blaine uses 350, and if it were 350, you know, but I just think something. I certainly was not suggesting that we follow the same path as <laughs> the city of Blaine. I'm just saying overall, there is not a single property more than likely that exists at a cost of $200,000, either in Ramsey, Washington, or Anoka counties. So, not I that, mean, not, with, not with rare exception. Been, not that it hasn't been probably condemned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So, I mean, that's all. I, I'm not trying to make a case yeah, yeah. Uh, for yeah. anything on behalf of anything. I'm just saying, I think statewide, you could even use a median home value of the statewide's estimate and just use that as a baseline. I mean, I understand I people can do math, but yes. Manager it doesn't Brad have to be complicated. Bradley, Board of Managers, I will come back Thank with you, uh, an idea. Uh, I'm hearing the board uh, focus that uh, the impact on our uh, residential properties might be of most interest. I'll of try course. and find out what average is there and use a number where no one has to do the math. Yeah, again, it's an estimate, but we can do that. Uh, Mr. President, uh, thank you. Uh, I'd appreciate that also, uh, uh, Mr. Administrator. And, and the reason I bring it up is because I know Washington County publishes uh, a byline Rice Creek's tax. And so uh, when the folks uh, look at the public hearing and see a, a number that's like 31 and everyone has uh, uh, a much, much number larger, the, the immediate assumption is that uh, you know, a two hundred thousand dollar property is like, like uh, Manager Robertson said. I, I'd sure like to be there too. <laughs> we certainly don't. Uh, I'm sure we all would. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's a little more fair for them. So when they see their tax statement, they understand. Are there further questions or comments of Nick? If not, we will proceed to the next. Uh, I assume the next part, Nick, is to invite the public. That's correct. Okay, at this time we'd like to, let me start off by saying, is there anybody on the phone? I don't see anyone on the phone other than our own staff. And I know we have one person in the audience who's not part of our staff. Did you uh, care to make any comments? Please come forward and identify yourself. <clears throat> Good morning, my name is Janelle Calhoun. I am the candidate for District 36A House of Representatives. I live at 6729 West Shadow Lake Drive. And I am coming for educational purposes today to get a better understanding of 
our water, our Rice Creek shed, watershed, the interaction with cities, counties, and our local government. And I'm grateful for all the work that I see happening here. Thank you. Thank you. And let me tell you that we have <clears throat> proposed legislation in the, in the House. If you're elected, we'll be talking to you about that. That's a quid pro quo sort of thing. You know. We've got to protect our water. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful to have you here. Any other comments? Uh, President Bradley, in, in that I don't see anyone else <clears throat> uh, publicly wanting to speak, uh, staff do have uh, some additional information we'd like to add, if I could. Please. All right, for the communication and outreach budget, uh, this did come up at the workshop discussion of a potential increase for 3004. Fund 3004 is where uh, the Washington Conservation District is, is paid out of. Uh, I was approached by Jay Riggs. He is uh, interested in an increase for the MRAP program. Uh, that program provides uh, it's an educational resource. MRAP stands for East Metro Water Resource Education Program. Uh, the acronym for it is MRAP. The goal is to educate community residents, businesses, staff, and decision makers about uh, issues affecting uh, our surface water resources and engage people in projects and programs. Uh, and so we have in the past entered into contract with them to uh, support that along with many other watersheds and cities. Uh, in the past, our funding has been $3,183 per year. I sent an email about that uh, the other day. And our uh, other watersheds that are within the MRAP area, their uh, program contributions are between $13,477 up to $26,530. So Washington County, uh, our last contract, I do recall was a two-year contract with, like I said, $3,183 per year. They're asking for an increase. I think it's uh, reasonable for the district to um, support this. We do want uh, all our citizens, if you will, rowing the boat in the same direction and, and promote the, the same across uh, watershed boundaries. Uh, and this is one program that does it along with our own. John, I believe you've had some discussions with Jay Riggs about this. Would you care to share you, some Mr. of that? President. Yes, on Wednesday I attended the Washington County Consortium <clears throat> uh, meeting, which we had a tour, and Mr. Riggs was there, and he approached me and uh, reminded me that we paid uh, about 3000 is what he said, and he was asking for an increase to 6000 Now, this is annually, you understand. An increase annual. to 6000 or an increase of? of? No, to 6000 to okay. double it. Only, okay. He's only talking about double it. year. Per year, yep. annually. So, um, of course, my uh, uh, immediate response was, how about four? Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, he said that uh, based on the taxes and values of property going up, that uh, this was uh, uh, what he was, was the basis for his request. I uh, have um, experienced over the years the program that, miss, uh, that this is and the person who runs it, and it's a very well-run program. Uh, but uh, I would also remind us here in this district that while uh, we're not exactly East Metro, we're kind of East Central because we drain into the Mississippi. And um, I, I don't have any objections to doubling it, to outing Mr. Riggs. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, but I'm not a advocating more than his request. So um, uh, we don't, um, I, I hope the administrator and working with the uh, Washington Conservation District will uh, have a little more definition on what we receive or the receivable for this in the future. Um, it's a good program and all, and, uh, but most of its concentration has to do with uh, uh, the St. Croix and uh, lower Mississippi, or, or I should say, uh, you know, the part down by that South Washington County has down that way. But other than that, I, I have no objection to honoring his request of six annually, thousand annually. Mr. Administrator, Nick. Yes, uh, Board of Managers, I did have a discussion with Jay Riggs. Uh, we do anticipate a meeting in the future regarding deliverables from it. Uh, <clears throat> certainly Kendra will 
be heavily involved in that. Um, we'll look to define what products uh, our citizens uh, receive or are exposed to from it. Um, if you do uh, see the suggestion by Manager Waller as reasonable, we could certainly put that uh, into the budget. I would suggest levying for that amount because this would be something we hadn't and previously levied for. Um, and, and, you know, we have uh, 3,000 and change. I'd just say we, we increase it by 3,500 or some round number. Uh, again, this is budgeting purposes. In the future, we will enter into a contract. The board will remove, uh, review and approve the contract. Uh, and you'll see the final numbers there. So I would propose we not vote on it only because we are not voting on any part of the budget at this moment, if I understand correctly. What what are we doing today? Yes. Uh, thank you, Manager Bradley. Board of Managers, at this point, you're taking public input on the proposed budget. Uh, I am relaying to you indirectly things that I've heard for your consideration. Um, I will leave here with, I'll, I'll call it a flavor of what the board would like to see. I will come back at our September meeting where you will look to adopt it and you will see the adjustments based on the uh, the flavor I've left. <laughs> so, and we will see the deliverables. Uh, uh, Robertson, do you have a flavor today? No, I just think the dialogue is funny. The adjectives and metaphors make me laugh. So I appreciate yeah. that there's at least a sense of humor on, and as an undertone too. How do you feel about increasing it to 6,000? I don't have a problem with that, uh, but um, it would be nice to see the deliver. I mean, for That's budget purposes, uh, not at all, but we should see the deliverables. Yeah. When we sign the contract. So. Do we, well, yeah, we'll have a contract with them, will we not? Well, yep. just because we put it in the budget doesn't mean it happens. that we spend it. Right. So, but it's nice to have that part. Yeah. That's just all I'm saying about it. President Bradley, uh, yes, the the board is correct. You will see, uh, and I'll I'll make sure. Obviously, it's a, under ten thousand uh, dollars. You've delegated some of that, but I'll intentionally bring this back to the board for your consideration. Uh, those contracts typically include uh, some definition of the deliverables uh, that the district receives. Andrew, why don't you have any assistance for the? No, so I good. I fully concur with the recommendation to that we double this and so when, it, when you bring us the budget back you can I think safely include 6,000 uh, as the expenditure very good if that's adequate flavor for you <laughs> <laughs> tastes good <laughs> I like that. Uh, I like that that was great. that was helpful that was manager Bradley yes. I do have an additional uh, yep. comment uh, uh, continuing, uh, as you know, many of these projects and, and programs, we, we see r changes readily, right? We apply for a grant. We don't know if we're going to get it, et cetera. So it's always our best guess of what we will be spending in the coming year and, and balance out our, our books, so to speak. But the other uh, issue that I am uh, like to mention to the board is the Clear Lake Water Management Project. That is Fund 6029. I currently have $10,000 uh, slated there. I would like to increase that to a total of $85,000. Uh, that's an additional $75,000. Here's why. Uh, the Eureka project in Forest Lake, Eureka Avenue, it's a reconstruction. We would like to see the shoreline of Clear Lake, which is a directly adjacent, uh, be restored. It's a well-used area by citizens for fishing. There's a lot of stopping along there, a lot of pulling off and, and uh, litter and, and use of the shoreline that's uh, caused it to be in poor condition. The city is moving forward with plans to do so. Uh, they need to acquire some land from the state, uh, the DNR. They need to surcharge or stack material on some of the low wet areas in preparation for that. It's not definitive as to when the shoreline restoration will be undertaken. I suspect it may take place uh, along with the surcharge ahead of construction. It might be well uh, to get the restoration of the shoreline ahead of the road work. So with that long uh, 
explanation, I would like to change that uh, 10,000 to 85,000 for line 6029. I'm suggesting to you that would come from uh, fund balance. You currently, um, in your 2024 budget, have budgeted $75,000, which you'd levied for. We're going to come out substantially below that, mm -hmm. but it looks like 2025 may be a year of work. So which fund balance is coming out of? Uh, there's, I'm just going to say it's going to come out of the fund balance. Fund balance. Yeah. Got it. So it's not, it will not reflect property taxes, is what you're saying. That's correct. Got it. Anyone wish to ask questions about that? I just comment that uh, we've always, uh, this project's been on the books for a long time uh, and uh, been a lot of uh, a delay because of the different agencies involved in this and the discussion of what to do. And, and we've always had a 50,000 marker, as I recall, on it pretty much. So, um, I don't think that uh, 85 is that far out. And if he's actually putting 85 in there, it sounds like it's uh, uh, going to be soon. But who knows, it might be another 10 years because the DNR is involved in this. And so, uh, and uh, the, the county, I think, also. Uh, so, anyways, that's all. I, I, yeah. I don't have any objection, nothing yeah. negative about it. President Bradley, just to go a little bit further, uh, yeah, so development of plans uh, for the shoreline restoration, but then you also have funding opportunities, and then the question is, will you be successful in those? So <clears throat> 85 should cover it. Uh, Sounds like a clear water fund to me, but I'm... Yeah. <laughs> you're ta uh, you're talking for the audience about the, by the landing, right? The, yes, uh, the landing in south. Yeah, okay. Manager Wynan is, uh, serves and represents watershed districts and the Clearwater Fund board. So with that... Always lobbying, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I lobbied her for legislation. I, I lobby you for money. <clears throat> so Yes, uh, if I could yeah. continue, Manager Bradley, uh, you'll recall our budget schedule include a potential for a special workshop on August 19th. Uh, given the, the comments you received in the dialogue, I'd, I'm not seeing that as necessary, so I'm just confirming with the board. Does the board agree that we don't need a special workshop? Agree. Okay. I don't yeah. think so. Certainly you can have discussion at the time of the <clears throat> look Obviously. to adopt the yep. final, of course. Yes. Yep. We'll see okay. it. If I learn anything new, I'm happy to bring it to the board at the <clears throat> September workshop, but we're right up against the approval. Yeah. Uh, and then to the next item, uh, fund transfers. Certainly the board can do fund transfers at any time. Uh, I did mention this at the workshop. Uh, when you adopt your budget is an appropriate and, and reasonable time to do so. Uh, this consisted of a discussion of removing uh, fund 9501 and 9502. That's Long Lake Sed Basin, the Lock Lake Sed Basin. Um, to remove those from there, we should, according to our good guidance from Redpath, uh, zero those out. That will require a fund transfer uh, to manager uh, Waller's point, uh, comment and inquiry. Yes, these facilities still exist in your watershed <coughs> management plan. I'll note that none of the other facilities have specific line items. We just have a fund to manage those. Um, so uh, we will work to move forward and, and remove those that uh, should be decommissioned. Well, Mr. President, I'll, I'll note the reason that these two funds exist for these two facilities was they're expensive to fix. Mm -hmm. And it used to be a kind of the concept was to put $50,000 away in the savings account. Theoretically, every five years, you would have to go in there and do something about them. So that's why I wanted them removed from the plan so that there's no need to have to say, well, it's in the plan, you have to do this, but you haven't been saving the money, so now we're in a desperate straits to find the cash. You know, that's what I'm concerned about here, so to make it clear as to what that is. Yeah. My fear is just the opposite, <clears throat> that we may and find ourselves in a position where we need to do something and we have no money. I, I, I'm agreeing with you. That's why I wanted to remove from the plan so we didn't have the need to exactly. do something. Yeah. Uh, 
manager Bradley, manager Waller, board of managers, uh, all good discussion. Uh, as you know, we've periodically updated our watershed management plan uh, to remove things, but also to add things as they become apparent needs. So uh, that adds a lot to time frame to accomplish goals. But I think in this case, you've uh, the board's taken a direction that that is reasonable. Uh, if in the future you determine that it is appropriate to, to answer to those two items uh, specific to them, you have the project anticipation fund, which will have dollars available to you and of course the potential for, for other uh, grants or other funding sources. Um, and so the second fold of, of fund transfer would be to move uh, the fund balance into the project anticipation fund, that's fund 99, while adhering to the fund balance policy, which is 40% across your different programs, as well as your committed and restricted funds. I'll so, say that you'll, nev you'll never hit it right on the head of the pin, but we'll, we'll have them, uh, I would say, uh, appropriately aligned with the board's idea of forest savings. So my concern has always been a political concern about particularly Lock Lake, uh, where they built a whole subdivision around the Lock Lake. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer going to be a Lock Lake. It's going to end up being a Lock Swamp. Mm -hmm. And part of the solution to that, of course, is for the city of Fridley to take out its dam. And we've been asking the city of Fridley for some period of time what their plans are. So my inquiry, and I'll make it an inquiry at this point, is should we not begin processes to amend our plan to remove these two projects so we can give the public notice and start getting input from them about the reality going forward rather than doing this sub rosa? Manager Bradley, I, w I would agree, yes. We've, we've had some dialogue <clears throat> with the city of Fridley in regards to its dam. They have no definitive direction. I think dam ownership can be challenging, yes. <laughs> uh, and we're, we're here to support them. It's very uh, common resource practice for dam removal and replace it with a rock riffle. Whether those good citizens who have quote unquote shoreline on this uh, sediment basin uh, would be interested in that or not is another matter. And obviously you work for the, the greater good across all. Mm -hmm. So excellent dialogue for the city of Fridley. The, the good news is that when this comes due, I will be long gone from this board. <laughs> but uh, again, I think if we are in fact declaring that we have no intention in one case because of the cost and because it's just not really a great idea. Uh, and the other one because we have no place to put the sediment, that we ought to start telling people this. So and I'll leave it at that for now. So yeah. Mr. President, I would just to add to your comments, <clears throat> we're not walking away from the sediment issue. We've spent a million dollars uh, rocking where the, studying where the sediment came from came from uh, the public park upstream. It comes from the uh, meanderings, and we've spent a million dollars, and we'll spend more yeah. to uh, put uh, reinforcement on those meanders so that the uh, velocity of water doesn't wash the sediment down into the basin. And we had this discussion just Monday with a proposed project that where we are looking for funds from the Clearwater Fund, for example, uh, to help us do exactly that. But I also will quote the sage knowledge of John Waller, who says, <laughs> every creek has sediment. <laughs> yes, but I, I, about that? yes yeah, it okay. does. Have. Every sure. creek has sediment mm. and it ends up. Uh, I, I just wanted to point out that we, and, we, we have been. And I've, I've, lost, I've lost this battle, John. I, I don't carry battles forever, but I do <laughs> believe in transparency. <laughs> Uh, well, you're in good. You have good humor today, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to make sure that you know it didn't sound like the, the watershed was walking away from it. We've I taken mean, off we've, we've a study, at, an alternative approach yes. to to uh, and and spent a good deal of dollars in order to 
and provide I'm, the same benefit. I am pleased that we are moving forward with the Clearwater Creek re meandering two-stage ditch and clean out. Well, we'll I discuss a, that a little later. Yeah, I, I, mean, I got discussion on that too. There you go. Yep. Isn't that fun? Okay. Manager Bradley, Board yeah. of Manager staff have another, no other suggested adjustments Good. as we move towards the uh, final budget and, and fund transfers. So are you looking for a vote or flavor? Nope, nope. nope. You, uh, I think in the script you'll close right. the public hearing and I would, move on at, from there. Uh, at this point, I will give one last opportunity for anyone who's on the line. Eric Swanson, for example, if you had comments about our budget, this would be your last opportunity to speak. Eric Swenson is muted if you were trying to talk to us. If not, I will assume that there are no further public comments and we'll close the public hearing on the, our budget. It's next on our agenda. <clears throat> Open microphone. Well, I think we've had that. Uh, <laughs> yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, next would be the check register. All right. Um, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, I would move that we um, accept the check register dated August 14th, 2024 in the amount of $169,163.09 prepared by Redpath and company. And I guess I'm supposed to say approve the Mm -hmm. Approve the payment. Yes. Is there a second? Second. On any discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Chris, you got anything to say to us about your report? Sure, yeah, Mr. President, just uh, a couple things I'll note. One is that uh, Ramsey County did four repairs. Um, uh, they're going to be getting underway soon. We just had a pre construction meeting on Monday for that effort and uh, beginning staking out there. So um, it, it should not be too long before there are um, trees starting to be removed from the corridor there. Um, and the only other thing I'll note is that the um, drainage work group uh, had a meeting uh, last Thursday. I was not able to attend. Um, I do know that they had some discussion regarding adequacy of outlet regarding um, notification, but as more informational in nature, uh, they uh, tend to do a more of a deep dive on it later um, and um, try to um, figure out where they're go going to be going with, uh, with uh, trying to study some of those matters. So, um, and then I'll also note that uh, um, we've had discussion um, regarding um, Minnesota Watershed's uh, annual drainage uh, seminar that they have in association with their um, um, annual meeting conference and uh, so I'm part of the committee on that to come up with uh, ideas for discussion. We've got a few ideas. They should be very um, uh, informational and entertaining. So um, I, I think we're going to try to outdo what we had last year and uh, uh, definitely encourage folks to attend again in the coming year. Mr. Chair, question for Chris? Yes. Okay. Um, Ramsey County 4 that's another close in ditch system that's getting repaired. So uh, I guess a couple things. One is I'm glad to see that our that Tom and Abel have another tech with them. So glad that that's filled out. Uh, I see that Ad, I re, I'm recalling again that Adam was um, the engineer for the, the project on Ramsey County 4 and then is also the engineer for the project we saw on Monday, just once again um, recognizing the challenges of doing a ditch clean out in a highly residential area. So what are you hearing about Ramsey County for? Are the residents being informed? Are they participating? Is there anything we should be aware of as far as feedback, positive or negative, mm -hmm. as that project moves forward? Sure, yeah, um, good question. Um, so um, we've had um, multiple avenues. We've um, tried to engage the public on this. We've had individual meetings with the landowners as uh, we've been able to engage them. We've had opportunities for them to attend public information meetings and such. 
Um, and we also did invite um, Northwestern University um, and the city to our pre-construction meeting so that they're engaged because we're going to be accessing um, uh, across Northwestern's property. And they're the uh, entity that is, uh, has the um, largest amount of ownership in that area where we're going to be working. So, um, And we are relying upon access um, through their property and across their um, um, drive aisles to um, get equipment in there. So they are uh, very well engaged and... Uh, um, you know, of course, with any of these projects, we're going to have a mixture of people that are very pleased with what uh, they're seeing and is going on, and we're going to have some people that are um, going to be um, unhappy, particular with the interim condition. And we always uh, are encouraging people to be patient with what we're doing, that um, what they're seeing is, in fact, an interim condition, and that um, it's going to take a while for it to. Um, uh, re-establish itself the vegetation and such out there uh, but with each one of these we're learning more we're getting better and uh, refining our techniques on them and I'm very confident that uh, um, this uh, effort is going to be quite successful at getting vegetation to be restored along the banks so that we're not having that continual issue of sediment and that we are able to retain our access to maintain the system because right now there's neither access nor um, is there any sort of protection of the, the banks uh, with the bare ground. Well, I know we've had excellent relations with the relationships with uh, the city of Roseville in doing this entire project and um, keeping, I'm keeping the county commissioner informed as well as the um, senator in that area because oftentimes they're the ones that get the calls. So keeping that communication open along all levels of government, especially when we're dealing with people's property, is uh, always a good idea. So thank you for that. Update is always good. Any other questions of Chris? If not, uh, Mr. Tomczak, your updates. Yes. <clears throat> a couple of items. Uh, it, Board of Managers, uh, again, I'll mention uh, Centerville and the Federal Emergency Management Agency uh, letter of map revision. I think that's great news. Uh, I'll note that it took 511 days to get that across the line, which uh, is a long time, but success in the end. Excuse uh, me, Mr. President, but it took a little longer, didn't it? I mean, how long of years has it been since you were in the courthouse over that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just since the application was made. <clears throat> That's so, correct. So many, so many, be, many years. Yeah. So to be clear, point. but be clear, what this means is that residents yes. who previously were in a floodplain are no longer in a floodplain and don't have to buy floodplain insurance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Manager Bradley, Board of Managers, taken a little bit farther. The best information that's available regarding <clears throat> the flooding conditions in the area are now reflected in the federal map. Uh, so they're is likely both winners and losers, uh -oh. if you will. Uh, but yes. <laughs> we so, only like winners. <laughs> <laughs> some folks will be removed. Um, at that time, uh, you remember Mr. Stats was on there. Uh, do have an appointment set up to visit with Mr. Stats, the administrator at uh, City of Centerville in regards to JD3 and uh, Clearwater Creek that you talked about at the board workshop. Uh, also came up at that time was the new Brighton floodplain in FEMA. Uh, they had asked us once again, uh, them being the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, for additional information. We have provided that, uh, and now we wait to see what they think of that information. I'll make note, uh, I get these monthly reports from Minnesota DNR regarding the conditions stream flow report, uh, and notably, Rice Creek, that dark blue area there, uh, and our surrounding areas are in flood flows. This was uh, August 11th, uh, same kind of held true for August 4th. So we, we do are currently under high flows uh, as we move about uh, our day-to-day -day going down the road and we don't see these things. Uh, I wanted to share with you that they are obviously happening and impacting our, our citizens. Um, Yes, uh, letter of response. You'll recall you, you did review uh, communication from Perry Wagman uh, on your workshop. I intend to issue a letter back to him. Uh, and I know we have regular phone conversations with him as well. Uh, Tom, 
is primarily, uh, and we'll look to continue that. Uh, just circling back on the work we've done and where we're headed here, uh, I intend to invite him to the alternative for discussion when it's on the workshop so he can hear firsthand that, that matter. Golden Lake uh, celebration of its delisting, that is Thursday, August 15th from five to seven. That's at Golden Lake Park. Uh, there'll be some uh, speakers from City of Circle Pines and discussion about the lake's recovery and what comes next in our future plans. Uh, DNR, threatened and endangered presence. Uh, we can in continue to um, discuss with the DNR uh, its interpretation of statute and application of its uh, jurisdiction on uh, district project that's up at 102232 at, at Pine Street. Uh, we're working with them to re resolve it. Um, we've refuted their position to some degree based on the statute and how it plays out remains to be seen. Uh, we do have an internal protocol that was uh, discussed at length with uh, the guidance of our attorneys. We use this when we administer the Wetland Conservation Act and bring matters to you. So uh, we'll see where this goes and, and obviously bring it back to the board for its decision. You'll be wearing your public drainage authority hat or uh, your watershed district wetland conservation hat, hat as a permitting authority, et cetera. Um, so we'll go from there. I have no other uh, updates. Happy to take any questions. I have a question about your map there. Is yes. Rice Creek the only one that's in high flow? No. no. Or that's just highlighted us? The dark blue is flood flows. Uh, this is, in this map, it's it's Western uh, County. I can share these with you. The, the aqua color, which is dominant in the state is high flows. And so the flows exceed the monthly uh, 25th percentile. Okay, so that's just, that's telling us that we've had a lot of water in the metro area. There's a lot of water in the system, yes. In case you hadn't looked. I, I, yeah. I, 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 By the way, we're supposed to have I, a day long rain tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Are yes. we really? Starting yeah. tonight. No going oh, for me? Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Long. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So uh, Wednesday, I had the, also the duty to uh, attend the Washington County Consortium meeting, um, which was a tour, and I'll just uh, talk about the highlight, I guess, of it. Uh, Washington County, along with the Department of Natural Resources, has developed a 3,000-acre open space hunting wildlife management area and public park. So this begins on the south end of Big Marine Lake, which Washington County had, has been purchasing over a number of years and extends southward along uh, uh, beyond County Road 4, along uh, County Road 15 on both sides. And if you drive out there, what was known as Kelly Farm, or uh, you know, is now has signs on it that says WMA. Uh, this is you know, uh, a grant came from the state someplace, maybe it's clean water money or something, who knows, and they bought out the uh, uh, O'Neill family and the Washington County has bought out the other side of the road, the east side, and uh, it's in three phases for Washington County in order to make the payments on it. So that's a, a huge uh, change there. Um, the um, I, I went to the CAC meeting also. We had a tour of the Blaine wetland area. It's a wonderful boardwalk. I just uh, note that uh, the gal that made the presentation uh, was talking about no need to drain these swamps anymore because of the mosquito eating plant as we were all batting mosquitoes off of us. So, uh, but I don't think that's <laughs> any reason to not drain swamps. I mean, <coughs> yellow fever, malaria, West Nile fever, whatever else. I also uh, don't think that's a need to, to stop uh, the Metropolitan Mosquito Control Program either. Uh, so. Um, even though there might be a plant that eats a few mosquitoes for us. Uh, number three would be, uh, I'd talk about the uh, Centerville uh, uh, project that we looked at Monday, and I, I have some comments about this now. I guess I want to look at it from the lake coming up. And the first thing I'd say is um, the delta is what the complaint is about, and maybe that needs to be removed. And it wasn't really clear if that was part of the project or not. The next thing is that, as I recall, and we had earlier, 
Can you explain that last one? The delta, the delta. Well, the delta in the lake is the, is the issue from, you know, from, 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 from the, coming from all the uh, sediment that's out there, the plume, as they call it, or such. Coming from, coming from where? Well, that's a good Great. question. Yeah, I think it's coming from the, I was about to go there, Mr. President. In our past experience, when we've had sediment fall into ponds as such, we've generally found it comes from the meanders that are just upstream, which happen to be there. And so I'm interested to see about having meanders uh, reinforced upstream. They take plumes out of Somerville, but not out of Black Lake, not out of, okay. Uh, there are two different things. One is a public water and the others are sediment ponds. But anyways, we don't need to get into a technical debate about this right at the moment. I'm just saying uh, it, it, uh, plumes have been removed from Golden Lake, which we're going to celebrate tomorrow night, by the way. Uh, and uh, uh, so it's not an unheard of thing. But reinforcing those, those uh, meanders that exist so that they don't erode anymore is an important issue. Uh, I don't know that extending the meanders is a good idea there. It's pu public property on both sides uh, uh, and private property. Uh, but I didn't see anything in the, in the pro project that was going to help out the cemetery. Now, I know uh, Father Guffon Cemetery gets flooded. And as, uh, since I'm from that community area, um, that parish, um, I've uh, been told that um, uh, Mr. Ray Houle is often underwater in the cemetery. And so I think that may be one of the reasons that that was originally straightened in order to make sure the water would keep going. And we need to, to take a look at that issue that's there. I'm not so certain that this two-stage ditch system that's proposed at the very, very upstream of this project is really uh, uh, necessary in there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wonder, after driving over there and taking a look at it, I was wondering if there's, some of this is going to qualify for wetland replacement or not. I don't, I don't know. I mean, but that's what I'm driving around in, and only from the car. I didn't get out and take a look at it. So I thought that project is pretty expensive and wasn't really focusing on what the primary issues were, which was the sediment in the lake, re, uh, reinforcing the meanders so the sediment doesn't come, just as we did on the Fridley project over there, and uh, uh, the. Um, and so it, uh, I'm, I'm not against the project. You understand. But maybe in this present presentation, its format, it's, uh, there could be some adjustments to it. Um, to move on then to another issue was um, we had the rules a while back. And uh, I went home and, and with the board as I was, I was reading uh, about it. And I couldn't find Rule M, which is referred to in Mr. Holtman's letter about the gun club settlement last year. So I dug out my library. And uh, there's no Rule M up to 97. And there was no rule M. I couldn't find my rule M. It all ended L. And so I, uh, I got on the telephone and, and uh, to relieve my anxiety, and Teresa sent me a copy of rule M, which I remember it being passed. I don't remember anything more than that. And it's here. We still have it. It was the first comprehensive wetland management plan, I believe, we had. It was exclusively for that 5362 area. And one of the, I'd ask that all the managers be given a copy of this just for our background information, because um, it has an item here at the bottom of the first page that says, for, uh, for activity subject to this rule, a separate permit under district rules B, C, D, and F is not required. And so this was under the rules that we reviewed. The only place you could find rule M was in a colored graph uh, map. And, and, and the other uh, comprehensive wetland management uh, areas are listed for uh, Lionel Lakes and for uh, Columbus, et cetera. They're actually named there. But I could see this little bitty over 5362 had a different color, so that made me think. So I, I just make that request. Um, it, it is referred to in Mr. Holtman's letter, and he says, well, we, ro we rolled it into F. And then when I read it, you know, F doesn't count here. It's, this is kind of goes with that contract. I don't know. Well, anyways, I think it's something that uh, I don't know. Then um, let's see who it's, uh, where am I at here in my list of things to, to chat about. Um, I think uh, we've got the, uh, the CC Center Bill. I, I think that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. I also attended the CAC tour of the Blaine wetland, and it was a very 
interesting um, walk. And, <laughs> you know, congratulations to Blaine for um, being able to make that happen. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, I have nothing other than piggybacking on what John said. I, I did have concerns, a lot of the same concerns that he had on that project that he was talking about. Um, but I admit that I have not had time to come to any conclusions either direction. So, but I do have concerns. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't, but I, I want to be clear from what I understood for the workshop on Monday, presuming you're speaking about the Clearwater yep. Creek project, is that once your report was final, it would come back. We made no decisions. We gave input on the presentation no. that we were given and that it was just the entry to a very broad conversation as there are several objectives that the project needs to accomplish, including that, you know, erosion and yes, the sediment. So, I mean, I guess I look forward to the input that's been shared here in a more formal setting where we have additional data in front of us to be able to have a robust conversation on what may be best for that area. Yeah. And on that note, I conclude my comments. And dare I say, I might make a motion to adjourn. Uh, no. Oh, I oh, we didn't oh, go in. Oh, oh. Half so, well, no, you better take no, 10 I, because I don't, I don't have a list, but I would like to, to note that unfortunately I'm going to be out of town for tonight or tomorrow night's uh, Golden Lake celebration. Uh, I hope those of you who can attend will do so. Uh, it's a opportunity for us to celebrate accomplishments and we don't get enough of those. So that, mm -hmm. that's a great uh, beyond that. Uh, when we have the appropriate time, we'll be happy to work through the process with regard to the Clearwater Creek project and the, the remaining clean out of Ditch 3. We've cleaned out everything except for that segment, and some of that has to get done. Okay. So with that, I will move. Motion move. to adjourn. Second. Let's All go. in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> Bummer. Recording stopped.